Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I would like to introduce a friend of mine, Jesse Schwartz, is with the Strategic Packaging Partners in Minnesota. Is that correct, Jesse? That's correct, yes. That is correct. And I know <laughs> if you're anything like Cleveland, uh, it's strange weather. I don't know if you guys are warm. Today is warm. Yesterday was snow. But good gravy, this is this is nuts. But thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So I um, started at General Mills. That's where my majority of my career was. I did not start in packaging, but I wandered over there and I really loved it. So I have a master's degree from Michigan State. Just really learned learned a ton from General Mills. It's an amazing company to work for. I left there in 2018 and shortly after started started my own my own thing. I was kind of solopreneuring for a while because I, I loved the flexibility and I also loved learning something new all the time. You can kind of do a little bit of that in corporate, but you can't get as much as you can when you're contracting and just every day is every day is different. So I really loved that for a while. And then I started realizing, wow, there's a lot of organizations that really need help. And there's also a lot of people who are like, gosh, I just, you know, got laid off. And there's just this kind of cycle within, I guess, everywhere, but particularly CPG. Every few years, people get laid off. And I just saw right. a lot of people I knew they wanted to try contracting, but it's really hard to work on the business and in the business at the same time and really grow something. So I've grown and expanded strategic packaging partners to be kind of a um, cross-functional panel of experts, primarily focused on packaging, uh, saving money on packaging, reaching sustainability goals, picking the right structure for their product, standing on the shelves, just kind of that, that total offering that packaging provides to an organization. We go through a discovery process. It's like, hey, what, what's going on right now? We're able to kind of stand in that gap of packaging engineer for as long as is needed. Sometimes it's program or project-based. Other times they need an engineer like 10 hours a week. Well, good luck finding someone that'll work 10 hours a week, but we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. Yep. And then you get that right. relationship piece, right? I think there's a misconception around contractors and around this space of you know, hiring and using recruiters and things because it, it has not traditionally looked like this where you could have somebody that's sitting in a role for you as a packaging engineer or as a CAD designer or as, you know, project manager and be a part-time person, but then also be part of your team and really have the best interests of your your whole team in mind and have a relationship with that person. Packaging gets confusing for organizations because it's complicated, right? So like a packaging engineer and I'll just speak about engineering because it, sure. you know, whittle it down a little. They have a very deep technical knowledge on packaging materials, what they all do, and how to design and all that. So they have this really um, deep technical knowledge. But then they also see across the organization. And I think that's the piece that a lot of people miss. So packaging engineer is concerned with um, sourcing, where this is coming from, the materials you get, the quality of the materials. So it's sourcing. It's sales and marketing. Hey, what do you need this this packaging to do to stand out on shelf? Could I find a supplier that did metallic inks, or could you know how how should we sell this and, and get noticed on shelf? That first one would be true. And then in operations, like we need to test this packaging. Does it work on the equipment? Is it causing downtime? Um, is there waste involved? Like how does this product? How does this packaging run for operations? Right. And then on the quality side, you know, are you protecting your product through shelf life? Is it is it lasting? Is it still a high quality product? The whole life of that that particular um, product, and then also in logistics distribution, right. do you, did you design it that it can survive? Are you optimizing your pallet, or are you somewhere right. around eighty percent optimized? And now you're just shipping a bunch of air. All of that gets brought to the table when you have packaging engineer there. When we do an assessment, we start diving into the way the business is running right now. Because a lot of companies rely on their suppliers, right? Like, hey, I need this thing. And they're like, oh, we sell that thing. But it's it's not really the team feel or the, I don't know, the total representation across the entire business that an engineer brings. And so I think that's an important piece of why you'd have a packaging engineer. And the difference is between working with a supplier and then having someone actually sitting on your team calls. I hope you like this content. If you want more of it, I put together a specialized packaging alliance, a group of packaging professionals, if you will, that are in different facets of this industry. We talk strategy, sales, and marketing. I'll also be answering your questions. If you want to join, click the link below. Thanks.
So right now it's primarily CPG companies, food and beverage. And then I do have some in the med device mm. side of things that we're kind of growing into that space. Primarily we're in um, food and beverage right now. A lot of times you have to have problems that are significant enough where people are kind of like, okay, we need to fix this now. You're, you know, you've got a ton of obsolete packaging or you've got a ton of waste on the line and like what is going on. It, it really starts kind of at that small mid market size company somewhere around maybe 25 million in revenue and all the way up to a billion dollars. It just depends on who's in the organization and how they think about leveraging outside talent. It's more of a leadership perspective than it is a need need base because everybody needs really talented technical people to step in to get stuff done. I think right now where we're really seeing, you know, the early adopters of of this, the innovative leaders who are thinking, hey, I want to try something a little bit different. I'm curious about this. This could be cool. Um, and right. we just haven't, we're not to the point yet where the, the masses have said, oh yeah, fractional, that makes sense. We, we do that all the time because it makes sense from a business standpoint. So it's really targeting those leaders that want to think about using their dollars in a dynamic way, in a creative way to really deliver high results for, for the organization in terms of saving and optimization. I go to several trade shows and have conversations there. It's all relationship-based, right? And so it's, how are you going to get in front of the people that you need to talk to? And often it's R&D managers or operations people. And to be honest, I mean, it's still a work in progress for me in terms of like, where is the ideal place to go? How, how does networking, yeah. how do you leverage a network? And it's it's kind of the challenging piece of it is kind of back to what we were saying earlier is that it's just not a very well leveraged way of getting really impactful work done yet. And right. so it's a little bit of an uphill slog, I guess, to get to get notice and to really communicate the benefit. I mean, I haven't had a client yet that the savings we generated hasn't paid for our services. You know, it's like well, without a doubt. slam dunk stuff. And we have, a, we have a process. We have a few different steps that we take people through a process. You know, the first step is to get all of your packaging specs in one place. There's a lot of organizations that have ERP systems and they might have a number assigned to packaging, but it doesn't go beyond the bomb, right? So then right. how do you leverage the, everything? Everything around packaging is around the data, right? So it's the data around, you know, what materials are you buying? What is your downtime? What is your shelf life result? What are your distribution right. results? like? And so right. it's really kind of developing that foundational awareness and the the need to have all of your packaging organized, even if it's just in an Excel spreadsheet, but something you can sort and filter and go through. And right. uh, then you can really start bringing to life those opportunities. And then I've, I've always found too, once we start working on one project, somebody here is they have a packaging engineer, operations calls and like, hey, we're losing $10,000 a day, dollars a day or a shift You've running this product and these problems. And yep. so we just kind of can dig in then and say, okay, well, you don't have any specs on this material. And it's not really a wonder it's not working. So let's kind of fix that, right? So... Right. Um, it's really fun. I mean, I love I love what we do because it's it's the the work that we do generates nothing but amazing results, right? You're saving money, right. you're reducing waste, you're reducing your carbon footprint, sustainability. It's it's all the things, right? You're making more yeah. money. And that's and that gets distributed to everybody that works for you, and it's a better place to work. I think I would just say the theme is around curiosity, and that will definitely lead leaders and organizations to a solution. I'm just being curious about doing things differently. And hey, what does this be, what does this fractional space look like? Just go learn about it a little bit and see what you can find. Because it's an amazing way to really leverage extremely talented folks, basically as long as you need them. It's really driving a lot of success for a lot of different companies. So look into it. Hi, everyone. It's David Baranek. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you want to see more, here's another video that you can check out. And I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Thanks.